Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I have some big breaking news, but first I just want to do a little bit of review so that that headline can make a lot of sense to you, okay? Do you remember who this young gentleman is? I talked about him in yesterday's video. His name is Seth Lim. In Asia, they call him the Ripple Whale, and he had walked into the coin telegraph Japan's offices and gave a really great interview. He talked at great length about Ripple, but he made that one statement that really stood out. He said that the major turning point for XRP's leap is when Visa or MasterCard transfers from SWIFT to Ripple. And I thought, what a curious statement. I mean, I know this guy has a lot of ears to the ground as to what's happening, especially not just because he's a ripple whale, but he is the founder of SOAR Cryptocurrency Exchange. He is the largest liquidity pool and order book of Bitcoin in Southeast Asia. So I know he has really very good connections when it comes to information. So I just kind of stood up and said, wow. And one more story to look at before we look at that headline, Ripple Insights. So here is when they became an official partner of Ripple. Earthport launched a distributed ledger hub. And in doing so, it was the launch of an API that makes banks connection to Ripple for cross-border payments more convenient and accessible, especially for those smaller institutions. So this solution was developed for banks that want to benefit of this, want to take that benefit from the speed and certainty of that Ripple network. And most of them need to overcome the limitations of the legacy technology or sometimes even the compliance issues. So Earthport gives them help. All right, here is the announcement that came out just a couple of hours ago. Top news, Visa to acquire Earthport. Yes, the US credit card giant is going to buy the London listed cross-border payment provider in a deal that values Earthport at great pounds sterling, 198 million. Wow, so I don't know if it was just some information that Seth had that was floating around among certain circles, or if it just happens to be coincidence. I'm not sure, but this is a big announcement. Now, here is something I received in, in the way of a reply, because I, I tweeted this out just a couple of hours ago. And it's a fair question or statement, however you want to look at it, but I do want to address it. So someone wrote to me, how do you keep your enthusiasm? I'm so tired of hearing about every known partnership under the sun in the complete known universe and Ripple is still at 37 cents. I'm only interested in the price, he writes. Now I'm the only one that is honest enough to admit it. Well, it's a, it's, it's a fair statement and I understand and I hear you. I seriously hear you, but you can't deny that the people who first bought into Amazon when it IPO'd 21 years ago at $18, they waited 21 years for it to achieve a $1,470 price. Or look at the people who invested in Facebook six years ago. They paid $38 for that IPO per share, and it has achieved $134. Or look at the people who believed in Google. Google IPO'd at $85 14 years ago, about, and now it is at $1,039. And I can go on and on. Netflix, 16 years ago, God, I can't believe it, for net, Netflix. It IPO'd at $15. It's now uh, achieved a $253 per share. I could go on and on. I could tell you about eBay. I could tell you about Apple. I can tell you one thing is for sure. These types of revolutionary changes with 
that are using technology don't happen overnight. And I really do believe, and I don't need to convince you um, that I'm right or that you should wait, because maybe you shouldn't wait. Maybe this really isn't a project for you. But I want to put one more thing into perspective for you. Today, Hyobi made an announcement, and they are going to delist 32 coins. And I couldn't believe who was on this list. I mean, just a year ago, we were talking so much about the SALT project. And gas is being taken off. Why? It's all due to the inefficient trading volumes. And so these projects are pretty much dead. Is XRP on this list? No. Do I think XRP will be on this list in the future? No. So I'm going to wait. And I totally hear you. And if you don't want to give it a shot, don't. Okay. But for those of you who want to believe that XRP is going to be one of those projects that really have the staying power, then come on, let's go for the ride because I think it's going to be very fun, very exciting. And yes, I don't think I will lose my enthusiasm. Okay, Mr. Yoshitaka Kitao, he had another big interview with a media here in Japan and he is promoting his book, which is, um, yeah, I'm going to do my best to start it uh, this next week, actually. And it's, it's, he is one of the very best partners for this space because banking is very conservative in Japan. And he does talk about how the breakthrough of the virtual currency starts from now. And the financial world will dramatically change. And he has been in this business since 1999. That's when he first launched SBI. And basically, the virtual currency and its technology will be the shock. And the writer writes that it's enough to annihilate the old financial institutions. That's the writer of this article said that. And Mr. Kitao went on to say that there are three big fees when you're doing international remittances here in Japan. The first one is you pay an overseas fee. The second one is a yen ordering handling fee. And the third is a related banking fee. And besides that, the old technology took four to five days or even a week if the bank didn't have an account for that settlement in the country to be remitted. So, um, yeah, and on top of that, you had the inaccuracy. That was still very much a risk. But blockchain has totally solved that. And XRP, the digital asset, as we know, is one of the most genius solutions for the liquidity. So I, again, when I see articles like this and I can uh, really believe how the future is going to be forever changed with this technology, I have the patience to wait. All right. And one last little bit to look at and I'm not going to go too far into this story but I am going to put it down in the comment section below. Japan's Mizuho Financial Group is going to launch a yen peg stablecoin in March and mainly it is going to be used for domestic shopping. They want to really hook up with Alipay and the reason for that is so that the um, stablecoin can be used by shoppers who come from China because Japan gets an enormous amount of tourists from China. Well, they have had record years of tourists uh, from all over the world, but still um, China is one of the um, leading countries when it comes to tourism. So the government is really pushing the financial institutions to go 
into making a cashless society really come to fruition. And this is um, Mizuho's uh, attempt at getting closer to being a cashless society and also at the same time being able to service the needs of the tourists who are here shopping. So I'm going to jump into the fluff now. My thought was, as we know that there are so many tourists coming to Japan, what do people want to buy when they come here? And I found a site that I think hit it correctly, and that is the 44 Japanese souvenirs to take home when you come here. So I'm not going to go across all 44. The sweets and the snacks are at the top, according to the Japanese government who study what people are buying. But also, uh, matcha tea is on the list. Wagashi. Wagashi is the sweet rice cake. So we, um, yeah, we, I sent out those uh, rice cakes to the winners. This is this is the one that I have um, for actually my own display for New Year's. Um, but I did get everybody's shipped, so the winners will be receiving it. Mm, takes maybe about five working days. And there is uh, some wood toys and koinobori, which is for the boys' festival, the sensu, which is the folding fan, tanugui, they are traditional uh, hand towels, really beautiful designs. So beautiful, you can frame those towels. And then Japanese-themed keychains, yukata. Y yukata looks like a kimono, but it's made of cotton. It is something you wear in, more casually and also in the summertime. And then we have the toe socks and what I want to take you down here is to number 16, Japanese kitchen knives. Japan really knows how to make a knife. It is called hocho in Japanese. And boy, do we have some hocho. I think most kitchens, most kitchens have at least a selection of six or eight different styles. Uh, a restaurant might have 15 to 20 different styles, and they are considered um, the highest quality in the world, mainly because they use the highest quality of steel, and they are very balanced, aesthetically beautiful, and razor sharp. And I mean razor sharp. If you go buy one, very often after you pick out your blade, um, they will sometimes engrave it for you. You can see the engraving is done here. Some places will engrave it for you for free. And um, they will actually sharpen it on a wet stone before you take it home. And then just to, I think, maybe show off how sharp it is, they'll throw up a piece of paper in the air and <laughs> slice that piece of paper in half as they wrap it up in newspaper, actually, uh, and then you take it home. So these are the types of kitchen knives. This is kind of a great uh, example site, but there is one site, there is one I want to show you. It's the Chuka Bocho. Chuka Bocho is one that a lot of kitchens have and it is used oh I have little kitties down here I have it's one that's used as a multi-purpose cutter and the blade is used for fruits vegetables herbs and spices and I found a, it looks crazy right but you can see that in this video here is a piece of daikon daikon is a large white radish that's used so many different ways and it is so yummy. I mean, gosh, I could do a fluff just on, just on this daikon. But here you can see how sharp it is. And this is just working on the actual radish itself. That's a rat, it's not the skin. He's just slicing it so thin 
that he's creating what looks like a piece of radish skin. So it's amazing, isn't it? So this is, yeah, this is how you use the chuka bocho. Yeah, this is a, a very skilled guy for sure. I don't know if I could do it. Probably not. I probably cut my finger. All right, everybody. That's all I have for you today. Please take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.